Bhagavad Gita, as it is, chapter 15. The Yoga of the Supreme Person. Text 1. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Gurideva Vodham Hada Shankam Ashvatam Rahu Avyayam Chandam Si Asya Panani Yastam Veda Sa Veda Translation The Blessed Lord said, There is a banyan tree which has its roots upward and its branches down and whose leaves are the Vedic hymns. One who knows this tree is the knower of the Vedas. Purport. After the discussion of the importance of Bhakti Yoga, one may question what about the Vedas? It is explained in this chapter that the purpose of Vedic study is to understand Krishna. Therefore, one who is in Krishna consciousness, who is engaged in devotional service, already knows the Vedas. The entanglement of this material world is compared here to a banyan tree. For one who is engaged in fruitative activities, there is no end to the banyan tree. He wanders from one branch to another, to another, to another. The tree of this material world has no end, and for one who is attached to this tree, there is no possibility of liberation. The Vedic hymns meant for elevating oneself are called the leaves of this tree. This tree's roots grow upward because they begin from where Brahma is located, the topmost planet of this universe. If one can understand this indestructible tree of illusion, then one can get out of it. This process of extrication should be understood. In the previous chapters, it has been explained that there are many processes by which to get out of the material entanglement. And up to the 13th chapter, we have seen that devotional service to the Supreme Lord is the best way. Now, the basic principle of devotional service is detachment from material activities and attachment to the transcendental service of the Lord. The process of breaking attachment to the material world is discussed in the beginning of this chapter. The root of this material existence grows upward. This means that it begins from the total material substance, from the topmost planet of the universe. From there, the whole universe is expanded with so many branches representing the various planetary systems. The fruits represent the results of the living entity's activities, namely religion, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation. Now, there is no ready experience in this world of a tree situated with its branches down and its roots upward, but there is such a thing. That tree can be found beside a reservoir of water, we can see that the trees on the bank reflect upon the water with their branches down and roots up. In other words, the tree of this material world is only a reflection of the real tree of the spiritual world. This reflection of the spiritual world is situated on desire, just as the tree's reflection is situated on water. Desire is the cause of things being situated in this reflected material light. One who wants to get out of this material existence must know this tree thoroughly through analytical study. Then he can cut off his relationship with it. This tree, being the reflection of the real tree, is an exact replica. Everything is there in the spiritual world. The impersonalists take Brahma to be the root of this material tree, and from the root, according to Sankhya philosophy, come Prakriti, Purusha, then the three gunas then the five gross elements, Pancha Mahabhuta, then the ten senses, Dashindriya, mind, etc. In this way they divide up the whole material world. If Brahma is the center of all manifestations, then this material world is a manifestation of the center by 180 degrees, and the other 180 degrees constitute the spiritual world. The material world is the perverted reflection, so the spiritual world must have the same variegatedness, but in reality. The Prakriti is the external energy of the Supreme Lord, and the Purusha is the Supreme Lord Himself, and that is explained in Bhagavad Gita. Since this manifestation is material, it is temporary. A reflection is temporary, for it is sometimes seen and sometimes not seen. But the origin from whence the reflection is reflected is eternal. The material reflection of the real tree has to be cut off. When it is said that a person knows the Vedas, it is assumed that he knows how to cut off the attachment 
to this material world. If one knows that process, he actually knows the Vedas. One who is attracted by the ritualistic formulas of the Vedas is attracted by the beautiful green leaves of the tree. He does not know exactly how to know the purpose of the Vedas. The purpose of the Vedas, as disclosed by the personality of Godhead himself, is to cut down this reflected tree and attain the real tree of the spiritual world. Text 2 Aras Churvam Prashti Tas Tasya Sankha Guna Pravrita Vishaya Pravala Aras Chamalan Yanu Santatani Pamanuvandini Manusya Loke Translation The branches of this tree extend downward and upward, nourished by the three modes of material nature. The twigs are the objects of the senses. This tree also has roots going down, <clears throat> and these are bound to the fruitative actions of human society. Purport The description of the banyan tree is further explained here. Its branches are spread in all directions. In the lower parts, there are variegated manifestation of living entities, such as human beings, animals, horses, cows, dogs, cats, etc., these are situated on the lower parts of the branches, whereas on the upper parts are higher forms of living entities, the demigods, Gandharvas, fairies, and many other higher species of life. As a tree is nourished by water, so this tree is nourished by the three modes of material nature. Sometimes we find that a tract of land is barren for want of sufficient water, and sometimes a tract is very green. Similarly, where the modes of material nature are proportionately greater in quantity, the different species of life are manifested in that proportion. The twigs of the tree are considered to be the sense objects. By development of the different modes of nature, we develop different senses, and by the senses we enjoy different varieties of sense objects. The source of the senses, the ears, the nose, eyes, etc., is considered to be the upper twigs, tuned to the enjoyment of different sense objects. The leaves are sound, form, touch the sense objects. The roots, which are subsidiary, are the byproducts of different varieties of suffering and sense enjoyment. Thus we develop attachment and aversion. The tendencies toward piety and impiety are considered to be the secondary roots, spreading in all directions. The real root is from Brahmaloka, and the other roots are in the human planetary systems. After one enjoys the results of virtuous activities in the upper planetary systems, he comes down to this earth and renews his karma or fruitative activities for promotion. This planet of human beings is considered the field of activities. Text 3 through 4. Narupam asyeha tato palaviyate. Nanto na chari na cha sampratishta ashvatam enam suvi rudhavaram asanga shastrena prerina titiva tatapadam tat parima gita vayam yasmingata na nevatanti vya tameva chadyam parusham prapadye Yata Prabriti Prashrita Purana Translation The real form of this tree cannot be perceived in this world. No one can understand where it ends, where it begins, and where its foundation is. But with determination one must cut down this tree with a weapon of detachment. So doing one must seek that place from which having once gone one never returns and there surrender to that supreme personality of Godhead, from whom everything has begun, and whom everything is abiding since time immemorial. PURPORT It is now clearly stated that the real form of this banyan tree cannot be understood in this material world. Since the root is upwards, the extension of the real tree is at the other end. No one can see how far the tree extends, nor can one see the beginning of this tree. Yet one has to find out the cause. I am the son of my father, my father is the son of such and such a person, etc. By searching in this way, one comes to Brahma, who is generated by the Garbhodakashayi Vishnu. Finally, in this way, when one reaches to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that is the end of research work. One has to search out that origin of this tree, 
the Supreme Personality of Godhead, through the association of persons who are in the knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then by understanding one becomes gradually detached from this false reflection of reality, and by knowledge one can cut off the connection and actually become situated in the real tree. The word asanga is very important in this connection because the attachment for sense enjoyment and lording it over the material nature is very strong. Therefore, one must learn detachment by discussion of spiritual science based on authoritative scriptures, and one must hear from persons who are actually in knowledge. As a result of such discussion in the association of devotees, one comes to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then the first thing one must do is surrender to Him. The description of that place once going, no one returns to this false reflected tree is given here. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the original root from whom everything has emanated. To gain favor of that Personality of Godhead, one has only to surrender, and this is a result of performing devotional service by hearing, chanting, etc. He is the cause of this extension of this material world. This is already explained by the Lord Himself. Aham sabasya prabhava. I am the origin of everything. Therefore, to get out of the entanglement of this strong banyan tree of material life, one must surrender to Krishna. As soon as one surrenders unto Krishna, he becomes detached automatically from this material extension. Text 5 Nirmana Mahadita Sangadosha Adhyatma Nitya Vinivrita Kamam Devan Deve Translation One who is free from illusion, false prestige, and false association, who understands the eternal, who is done with material lust, and is freed from the duality of happiness and distress, and who knows how to surrender unto the Supreme Person, attains to that eternal kingdom. Purport the surrendering process is described here very nicely. The first qualification is that one should not be deluded by pride. Because the conditioned soul is puffed up thinking himself the Lord of material nature, it is very difficult for him to surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One should know by the cultivation of real knowledge that he is not Lord of material nature. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Lord. When one is free from delusion caused by pride, he can begin the process of surrender. For one who is always expecting some honor in this material world, it is not possible to surrender to the Supreme Person. Pride is due to illusion, for although one comes here, stays for a brief time, and then goes away, he has the foolish notion that he is the Lord of the world. He thus makes all things complicated, and he is always in trouble. The whole world moves under this impression. People are considering that the land, this earth, belongs to human society, and they have divided the land under the false impression that they are the proprietors. One has to get out of this false notion that human society is the proprietor of this world. When one is freed from such a false notion, he becomes free from all the false associations called by familial, social, and national affections. These faked associations bind one to this material world. After this stage, one has to develop spiritual knowledge. One has to cultivate knowledge of what is actually his own and what is actually not his own. And when one has an understanding of things as they are, he becomes free from all dual conceptions such as happiness and distress, pleasure and pain. He becomes full in knowledge. Then it is possible for him to surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 6 Nathad Pasayate Suryo Na sha shanko na pavaka yargatva na nevatante tatama paramamama. Translation That abode of mine is not illumined by the sun or moon, nor by electricity. One who reaches it never returns to this material world. Purport The spiritual world, the abode of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, which is known as Krishna Loka, Goloka Vrindavan, is described here. 
In the spiritual sky, there is no need of sunshine, moonshine, fire, or electricity, because all the planets are self-luminous. We have only one planet in this universe, the sun, which is self-luminous, but all the planets in the spiritual sky are self-luminous. The shining effulgence of all those planets, called Vakuntas, constitutes the shining sky known as the Brahma Jyoti. Actually, the effulgence is emanating from the planet of Krishna, the Loka Vrindavan. Part of that shining effulgence is covered by the Mahatattva, the material world. Other than this, the major portion of that shining sky is full of spiritual planets, which are called Vakuntas, chief of which is Goloka Vrindavan. As long as a living entity is in this dark material world, he is in conditional life. But as soon as he reaches the spiritual sky, by cutting through the false perverted tree of this material world, he becomes liberated. Then there is no chance of his coming back here. In his conditional life, the living entity considers himself to be the lord of this material world, but in his liberated state he enters into the spiritual kingdom and becomes the associate of the Supreme Lord. There he enjoys eternal bliss, eternal life, and full knowledge. One should be captivated by this information. He should desire to transfer himself to that eternal world and extricate himself from this false reflection of reality. For one who is too much attached to this material world, it is very difficult to cut that attachment. But if he takes to Krishna consciousness, there is a chance of gradually becoming detached. One has to associate himself with devotees, those who are in Krishna consciousness. One should search out a society dedicated to Krishna consciousness and learn how to discharge devotional service. In this way, he can cut off his attachment to the material world. One cannot become detached from the attractions of the material world simply by dressing himself in saffron cloth. He must become attached to the devotional service of the Lord. Therefore, one should take it very seriously that devotional service, as described in the twelfth chapter, is the only way to get out of this false representation of the real tree. In chapter 14, the contamination of all kinds of processes by material nature is described. Only devotional service is described as purely transcendental. The words Paramamama are very important here. Actually, every nook and corner is the property of the Supreme Lord. By the spiritual world is Paramam, full of six opulences. In the Upanishads, it is also confirmed that in the spiritual world there is no need of sunshine or moonshine, for the whole spiritual sky is illuminated by the internal potency of the Supreme Lord. That supreme abode can be achieved only by surrender and by no other means. Text 7 Mame vamsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana mana shashtan indriyani prakriti stani kashati Translation the living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. Purport. In this verse, the identity of the living being is clearly given. The living entity is the fragmental part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, eternally. It is not that he assumes individuality in his conditional life, and in his liberated state becomes one with the Supreme Lord. He is eternally fragmented. It is clearly said, Sanatana, according to the Vedic version, the Supreme Lord manifests and expands himself in innumerable expansions, of which the primary expansions are called Vishnu Tattva, and the secondary expansions are called the living entities. In other words, the Vishnu Tattva is the personal expansion, and the living entities are separated expansions. By his personal expansion, he is manifested in various forms like Lord Rama, Nishingadev, Vishnumurti, and all the predominating deities in the Vakuntha planets. The separated expansions, the living entities, are eternally surveyors. The personal expansions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the individual identities of the Godhead, are always present. Similarly, the separated expansions of living entities have their identities. As fragmental parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord, the living entities have also fragmental qualities, of which independence is one. 
Every living entity has an individual soul, his personal individuality, and a minute form of independence. By misuse of that independence, one becomes a conditioned soul, and by proper use of independence, he is always liberated. In either case, he is qualitatively eternal, as the Supreme Lord is. In his liberated state, he is freed from this material condition, and he is under the engagement of transcendental service unto the Lord. In his conditioned life, he is dominated by the material modes of nature, and he forgets the transcendental loving service of the Lord. As a result, he has to struggle very hard to maintain his existence in the material world. The living entities, not only the human beings and the cats and dogs, but even the greater controllers of the material world, Brahma, Lord Shiva, and even Vishnu, are all parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. They are all eternal, not temporary manifestations. The word kashati, struggling or grappling hard, is very significant. The conditioned soul is bound up as though shackled by iron chains. He is bound up by the false ego, and the mind is the chief agent which is driving him in this material existence. When the mind is in the mode of goodness, his activities are good. When the mind is in the mode of passion, his activities are troublesome. And when the mind is in the mode of ignorance, he travels in the lower species of life. It is clear, however, in this verse, that the conditioned soul is covered by the material body with the mind and the senses, and when he is liberated, this material covering perishes, but his spiritual body manifests in its individual capacity. The following information is there in the Madhyandi Nayana Shruti. Sava esha prama nishtaitam shariram patityam atishrijinam brahma visham patya brahmana pasyati brahmana shrinoti brahma nevitam savam anubhavati It is stated here that when a living entity gives up this material embodiment and enters into the spiritual world, he revives the spiritual body and in his spiritual body he can see the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face. He can hear and speak to him face to face, and he can understand the Supreme Personality as he is. In Smriti also it is understood that in the spiritual planets everyone lives in bodies featured like the Supreme Personality of Godheads. As far as bodily construction is concerned, there is no difference between the part and parcel living entities and the expansions of Vishnumurti. In other words, at liberation, the living entity gets a spiritual body by the grace of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The word Mame Vamsha, fragmental parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord, is also very significant. The fragmental portion of the Supreme Lord is not like some material broken part. We have already understood in the second chapter that the spirit cannot be cut into pieces. This fragment is not materially conceived. It is not like matter which can be cut into pieces and joined together again. That conception is not applicable here because the Sanskrit word sanatana, eternal, is used. The fragmental portion is eternal. It is also stated in the beginning of the second chapter that in each and every individual body the fragmental portion of the Supreme Lord is present. That fragmental portion, when liberated from the bodily entanglement, revives its original spiritual body in the spiritual sky in a spiritual planet and enjoys association with the Supreme Lord. It is, however, understood here that the living entity, being the fragmental part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, is qualitatively one, just as the parts and parcels of gold are also gold.